Hey guys, Colin here, and welcome back to Fight for Truth, the channel where we bring you Christian commentary about the things that matter. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Michael Todd of Transformation Church. For those who don't know, Michael is an extremely popular, seeker-sensitive pastor who designs his sermons for the entertainment and motivation of man, as opposed to genuine exposition of God's Word. Recently, he preached a sermon entitled, quote, Power Trip to Power Flip, in which he touches on several issues related to the LGBT movement. This includes gay marriage, transgenderism, the authority of scripture, and many other things. And the question we're trying to answer today is simple. Does the teaching of Michael Todd on these topics accurately reflect the scriptures? So let's get right into it. Watch this. How much I'm going to get him to try to... God decided male and female. I, no, 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 I'm not, this is not a bad, I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing, this is not a, he, if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do? Like kind of a, like a little maybe if somebody, well, I was born like this, I don't know how I feel, that I, I feel you. And I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. There are so many problems with this statement, biblically speaking. Problem one, what Michael Todd is saying is fundamentally based on a desire to appease the feelings and emotions of sinful man rather than to present the truth of God's word. And trust me, this becomes more and more apparent as the video goes on. Problem two, Michael is representing God as sort of the bad guy in the situation. If he were talking to a trans person who wants to be a different gender than they are biologically, this is effectively his response to them. Essentially, he says, I wish I could have been there to change God's mind. Personally, I don't get the whole male-female thing. I wish there was a third category for you trans people. See, I'm on your side. I'm a really nice guy. But unfortunately, my hands are tied here because God has decided to make your gender expression sinful. We have no idea why, and it's totally his call. You see, Michael Todd is speaking like an employee in a store who spoke to the manager and was unfortunately unable to grant the request of the customer. Sorry, I just spoke to my manager and he says there's nothing we can do about your gender expression. I'm really sorry. Trust me, I'm on your side here. I agree with you. I wish we could change this corporate policy, but they've made up their mind on this, so there's just no use. Again, this represents God as the bad guy in the situation and Michael Todd as the distinctly good guy. The problem is that the church and God should be on a united front. We shouldn't have this weird tension between the two. In short, as a church, when we talk about this issue, we should be aligned with God when it comes to gender, not with the culture. And this brings us to problem three. As Christians, we should be acknowledging the goodness and beauty of God's standard. But instead of this, Michael implies that God's standard is effectively nothing more than an inconvenient set of rules that hurt your feelings. But this is not how the Bible presents it. Genesis 2.18 says this, quote, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. The helper he made for the man was a woman. And as a result, verse 24 says, quote, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, end quote. So this is God's beautiful, wonderful, intentional design for mankind, that there should be only male and female. This is not some unfortunate thing that we wish we could have changed if we were there. Rather, it's something that we should actively appreciate and worship God for. But of course, instead of honoring God's creative decree, Michael Todd says he wishes he could have changed it to make trans people feel better. None of this is confidently preaching God's word, not even close. In fact, it's the exact opposite. But this is not the only time he does this in the sermon. Watch this. Oh God, the pastors don't say this because they want to be absolute. Well, why did that? I don't freaking know. I, no, honestly, I wish God would have made it so much simpler and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. So again, we have a whole host of biblical issues with this. 
First, Michael Todd suggests that other pastors don't speak on this issue the way that he does, and that's because they want to make everything, quote, absolute. This is not true. The reason other pastors, pastors like Paul Washer or John MacArthur or Vody Bauckham, the reason they don't speak like this is simply because they have the spine to actually tell people the truth in love with boldness. It's not because they're being mean or hypocritical or rude. It's because they're acting like a real pastor should. They're acting like people who understand the biblical worldview. As 2 Timothy 4.2 says, quote, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, end quote. Solid pastors don't compromise in the way Michael Todd does in this video. The difference is very easy to see. Second, Michael said he wishes God would have made it, quote, so much simpler. For example, if he had multiple options for gender, like A, B, C, or D. That's what Michael said. But God has already made it as simple as it could possibly get. By definition, having two real genders is more simple than having an infinite number of fake genders. A world with just male and female is far more simple than a world with male, female, Z, Zer, non-binary, gender-fluided, two-spirited, and anything else you could come up with. So the fact is, God already made this simple for us, and he should be praised for that. We shouldn't be saying that we wish God had made it simpler. And let's be clear, the only reason Michael Todd wishes things were different here is because he wants to appease the sinful culture, which, by the way, is not in the job description of a pastor. As we just read, a pastor is supposed to teach the word with patience, exhortation, encouragement, accuracy, and even a rebuke if necessary. Third, Michael is again saying that he wishes the creational decree of God was different. And it may be accurate to say that in your flesh or in your sinful nature, you wish God had done something differently. But you need to acknowledge that thought as being part of your sinful flesh and repent of it. Because your desire to remove or change the standards of God does not make you loving or nice or kind or pastoral. It makes you plain wrong. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says this, quote, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. End quote. So let me ask you, is this thought obedient to Christ? Is it an obedient thought to say that you wish God would have made more genders? Obviously not. Wanting God to change his commands for you is the opposite of obedience. But Michael is using this unbiblical idea to make himself look loving and compassionate and sweet. But the next clip, well, that's truly shocking. Watch this. Frick! <laughs> no, I'm serious! As a pastor, like, so what do you think about gay men? I don't know! But I do know in the kingdom. If that clip doesn't help you realize that Michael Todd is not a reliable source of biblical teaching, I'm not sure what will. He says that if he is asked, quote, Pastor, what do you think about gay marriage? His hypothetical response is to stomp his feet, throw his arms up in the air, and yell, I don't know. But this is absolutely false and unbiblical. In fact, it's disqualifying. The Bible makes its position on gay marriage crystal clear. As we read before, Genesis says that marriage is only between a male and a female. And Romans 1, 26-27 calls homosexuality unnatural, a dishonorable passion, a shameless act, and an error worthy of penalty from God. It's not confusing. That's what the Word of God says on this topic. Michael just doesn't want to actually preach it because it's offensive. But let's go back to 2 Timothy 2.15. Rightly handle the word of truth. If you are a pastor and you are asked, what do you think about gay marriage? You can give many biblical responses, but none of them should be, I don't know. It's an issue that is fundamentally tied to sin. And also, it's an issue that the Bible is clear on. For a real biblical pastor, this is a prime opportunity to share the truth with others, which is supposed to be part of their job. But apparently, not for Michael Todd and not for Transformation Church. But then, strangely, Michael seems to go back on everything he previously said. After saying, I don't know, he says, quote, But I do know in the kingdom. This implies that he does know the standards of God's word on this topic. But if that's the case, why is he saying, I don't know? Michael is creating this weird, arbitrary distinction and tension between what he knows and what God says. The problem is that the Bible assumes that we can know what God has said, and what's more, we can communicate it clearly to others. Which again, and I sound like a broken record here, that's part of the job of a real pastor. 
Therefore, we should be able to confidently share the truth of God's Word, especially on a topic like homosexuality, but for some reason, Michael Todd won't do that. This is exactly the kind of teaching that you can expect only at man-centered, seeker-sensitive churches like his. It's a message that is so watered down of biblical truth that it becomes almost unrecognizable as a biblical sermon. If you ever attend a church like this, you are not going to be properly instructed in God's Word. Please know that. But in the next clip, Michael switches back to talking about the trans issue. Watch this. I don't, I don't know why he decided to do it like this. I don't know why you're wrestling like that, and I don't know what to do to help you but to stand with you and pray with you and not, and you're welcome at Transformation Church. Trans is in the title, Transformation, you can be here. Oh God. So now Michael says that he doesn't know what to do than to just stand with you in your confusion as a trans person. I mean, if he was doing the job of a pastor, he could call you out of your sins and to the gospel of Christ. He could offer you biblical counsel rooted in the truth of God's word. He could pray with you, teach you, encourage you, exhort you, and yes, even rebuke you where necessary. But in order to do that, he'd have to actually possess sound doctrine, which is obviously not the case. So what we end up with is the blind leading the blind. But then he happily says that trans people can come to his church. Of course, after all, trans is literally in the name Transformation Church. And it's genuinely confusing why he and his congregation would get so much glee from the fact that a word from a perverse and unbiblical ideology is coincidentally in their church's name. The idea that this would be some sort of happy coincidence for your church is seriously strange and unbiblical, to say the least. But in the next clip, he continues on the topic of gay marriage again. Watch this. Will I marry you? I, I can't, not because... I don't think you found love just as a kingdom ambassador. When I look back at the orders that are in the constitution of the kingdom, So now, when asked the question, will you marry a gay couple, Michael's response is, quote, I can't, but it's not because I don't think you found love. It's because the constitution of the kingdom doesn't allow it. And on this, there are several problems again. First, Michael's entire posture here is one that is apologetic and timid and bashful. With trembling hands and a quivering voice, he softly and shyly tells you that he can't marry a gay couple. This is far from the bold and solid posture that should be adopted by a pastor in this situation. And don't get me wrong, a pastor doesn't have to be mean or angry here. They just shouldn't be apologetic and embarrassed about what God's Word says. Second, he says that he won't marry a gay couple, but it's not because he doesn't think they found love. In other words, he's implying that homosexuality is a real romantic love. But the Bible never tells us this. In fact, it tells us precisely the opposite. The only genuine romantic love that we see positively represented in Scripture is that of between a man and a woman. Everything else is a perversion and a counterfeit. In Romans 1, 26-27, which we read earlier, it says that homosexuality is an unnatural error, a shameless act, and a dishonorable passion. So I'm curious, which part of that sounds like love to you? Nowhere in Scripture do we see homosexuality represented as real love. The fact that Michael Todd implies that gay partners could actually have a genuine romantic love, as the Bible defines it, is astoundingly false. And yet again, we see him timidly making God out to be the bad guy while he is the good guy. This is effectively what he's saying. I'm sure you guys really do love each other a lot. It's just that God says, I'm not allowed to marry you. I wish there was something I could do for you because I'm really on your side, but God just won't let me. And by contrast, Michael does not clearly or concisely say that this behavior is sinful rebellion against God, as he should. Also, he does not reaffirm the holy ideal of marriage which God created, nor does he make any attempt to truly defend the biblical worldview here. He simply offers a weak-willed, feeble, and frankly, unbiblical response. 
The point I'm trying to get across is this. Michael Todd's preaching doesn't come close to what the Bible actually says on these topics. And this is the kind of teaching that you should expect when you have a man-centered modern church focused on entertainment and motivation rather than genuine exposition of God's Word. When your entire ministry is based on pleasing man and pleasing the culture, we should not be surprised when your preaching reflects that. Michael Todd is not a reliable source of biblical teaching at all, and I hope this video has demonstrated that to you in some practical way. I pray this video has been a blessing to you, and please know this video isn't meant as a sinful attack, but rather as a biblical critique. Pray for this channel and for anyone discussed in the video. Many of you are looking for teaching resources or trying to find a new church. If so, check out the Teaching Ministries and Church Networks linked in the description. And by God's grace, let's move forward joyfully, holding to the truth of God's Word. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, and subscribe to our Rumble channel, link in description. And before you go, take a look at this list here. These are the people who make all of our free content possible with their monthly support. Today's highlighted channel supporter is Raquel A. If you would like this channel to do more research, make more videos, and reach more people, please hit the link in the description and join the Truth Army today. And until next time, fight for truth. Thank you, and God bless.